welcome back to this is day three of Fight Laugh Feast. This is my second recap video, but a total of day three. I want to give uh, the folks who normally listen to my podcast or want to be at Fight Laugh Feast or wish they could uh, or just care about my thoughts about it uh, an update about what happened. Check out my cool shirt, Fight Laugh Feast at the Ark Encounter. The politics of six-day creation. That's the theme of the conference this year. And man, it's cool. This is my first conference. And it's been a blast. And yet again, it's way too late and I'm exhausted. But it's been worth it. And it's been a blast. And so I I just wanted to talk about what I did today. Uh, today was the day of talks. A lot of talks. Um, well, I also went to the Ark. So that was cool. But... Yeah, so first, yeah, first thing was we heard Ken Ham speak again. And two very interesting things happened when I heard Ken Ham speak. So I said in my previous video that I heard Ken Ham speak yesterday at the, um, at the Creation Museum. And he, the name of his talk yesterday and today was Divided Nation Cultures in Chaos and a Conflicted Church, which is also the name of his newest book. I think it's his newest book. But anyway, uh, the it, he, he kind of did a recap of his talk from yesterday, but he added a ton of new content in the talk that I want to briefly explain because I thought it was fascinating. So one thing that Ken Ham did was he played a lot of clips of, um, I mean, in addition to just having an excellent talk, he played some clips of um, some apologists who are old earth creationists. Um, Ken Ham is arguing for young earth creationism. He's arguing for a six day creation and a 6,000 year old earth, like the Bible appears to say if you read it at face value. And like I explained yesterday, kind of the, the main point in his talk today also was the idea that we have a division between man's word and God's word. And all of the problems on top, like the abortion and homosexuality and, and you know every, everything else bad in the world, uh, those are symptoms of the real disease, which is that our nation has abandoned the word of God. And we cannot properly eradicate these problems up here without taking care of the foundation, which is the uh, faulty authority of man's word. And we need to, to replace it with the authority of God's word. And we do that by sharing the gospel. We do that by converting people, by making Christians. And then we can more uh, effectively and more permanently take care of the problems up here. And actually, that, that kind of theme permeated through a lot of the talks today. Uh, Ken Ham, when he shared those clips, uh, I was stricken with horrible shame. It literally sickened me. I felt bad, <laughs> like physically, <laughs> for a couple hours after Ken Ham's talk. It took me out physically. Uh, because I used to really, really appreciate a lot of the, uh, the apologists. Uh, I used to not like Ken Ham. I used to hate the perspective that he was coming from. And he's arguing that we need to have God's word as our authority and not man's word. We need to put man's word in uh, subservience. We need to put our thoughts, our actions, our observations, our science, you know, everything needs to be uh, subservient to God's word because God created the world and he was around during the creation of the world and he has chosen to tell us how it happened. And who are we to say that it happened any differently? Now, he also said, in the talk, um, for those of you who are listening who might be like, now where is he going with this? There is no, if we read the Bible properly and if we interpret science properly, there is no contradiction between science and scripture. 
But the issue is that many people, including a lot of popular apologists, like I was a massive uh, William Lane Craig fan for years, and I still appreciate a lot of what he does, but his approach I have moved away from. And, you know, I think he, he definitely, in a lot of ways, not, not in all ways, like he's not wrong about everything, but in a lot of ways, he puts man's word over God's word, and that's the truth. Uh, and that's, man, it's, uh, I, I remember what I thought about young earth creationists and I thought they were morons. I thought they were idiots and like, how can anybody be a Christian and a young earth creationist? <laughs> and he played a clip of William Lane Craig saying exactly that, uh, about young earth creationists. Like, we, he said something like, we need to eradicate young earth creationism in churches. Uh, he said that. Yikes. And that, among a lot of other clips, just physically made me sick because I had that opinion when I was younger. And, uh, man, it filled me with shame. But I'm better now. And, hey, I, I have changed my mind. <laughs> I have come to my senses. I have stopped being ashamed of what the Bible says. And it's great. It's a, a joyful way to be. And it's a, a better and more true way to live. It's great. Uh, the other thing that Ken Ham did was that uh, a lot of people are like, yeah, you know, I've even heard this myself. I, I never looked into it and did the research myself. But I was under the opinion that uh, Ken Ham called William Lane Craig a heretic at some point or something like that. And you know, who knows, he might have, but um, I'll definitely do, my more, do more research and I think I'll talk about this in another video. But what he said, he's like, people take my words out of context all the time and they say that I think people aren't even Christians if they disagree with me on this, but, and then he clicked to the next slide and in caps on the screen, he said, the creation is not a salvation issue. And then he pulled up a verse in Romans and it said, if you, um, you know, what does it say? Like if you confess the name of Jesus and you believe you will be saved. That's what we need to do to be saved. We don't add and believe in a six day creation and believe the earth is 6,000 years old. So he very clearly and blatantly could not have been more clear that he said, this is not a salvation issue. Uh, but he said, and, and this is true, that it, it creates an inconsistent Christianity if you have an incorrect view of the Bible or an incorrect view of creation. And what he argues and what everybody else was arguing at this conference is a proper understanding of Genesis uh, effects and colors your understanding of the whole rest of Scripture. And Genesis 1 through 11, this, this creation account, is very important for us to get right because if we get it wrong we misunderstand huge things later in scripture like if we get the uh, creation account wrong and say we don't think that there was a literal Adam and Eve um, which William Lane Craig does not think that there was a literal Adam and Eve he thinks it was mythological then there really was no fall or the earth was not really good prior to the fall if the fall ever really happened and so like the earth was eternally sinful and there was there was no perfection to fall from a, a lot of issues and then therefore why do we need a savior the world was created imperfect and uh it, it just doesn't make sense like it, it 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 leads to an evil god or it leads to no god or uh, an inconsistent Bible or the Bible's just wrong and so God is a liar or God doesn't exist or you know it, it like creates serious issues uh, and we don't want that and so we just have to be consistent with scripture because scripture is our authority and it's from God who is the creator of the universe and he probably knows what he's talking about so that was Ken Ham's talk I really enjoyed it and it sickened me but in the in a really good way because it, it made me really reflect on how ungracious and nasty I used to be in my thoughts many years ago. I used to work for a pastor who hated young earth creationists. He, I mean, we had a young earth creationist um, as the worship pastor in my church and he 
said things like, I wish I could fire him and, you know, I'm never hiring one of these idiots again. And uh, he's, I mean, the awful stuff he said behind the, the curtain to me was just despicable. Man, it was awful. And then I, I didn't have the backbone, honestly, back then to do anything about it. Yikes. So whew. thank God that I have gone away from that. It was not good. After that, we went to the Ark, and the Ark was spectacular. I think probably my, so the Creation Museum was, I think, a better experience than the Ark. But you should do both. And if you ever come here, I think you should do the Ark first, because there are a lot of um, displays inside the Ark that also kind of overlap with some displays in the Creation Museum. And uh, I think the like the, the, the logical flow would be to go to the Ark first then the Creation Museum to kind of dive more deeply into some of the content that you cover in the Ark. But I think one of my biggest takeaways from the Ark was kind of in your head, you know, we, we have natural doubts of Scripture sometimes. And I, I did when I was younger. You know, I don't so much now. <laughs> but definitely when I was younger, I would read like the creation story or I would read Noah and I would think there is no way all of these animals would have fit inside of a boat how can a person make a boat big enough to fit all the animals in the world it would have to be you know two of each kind and then seven of other kinds how would a, a ship be big enough to fit that many animals and then you see it in person you see this ark built to biblical measurements and when I saw it, I was like, yeah, I can see how all these animals would fit in here. Like it is, it is larger than life. It blew my mind. It is, it is gargantuan. <laughs> the stuff they fit in this ark is like, yeah, I could see people and all the animal, all the, all the different kinds of animals in the world living in here for a year. I, yeah, I could totally see that. <laughs> Uh, so man, it was it, that was a cool experience. It's worth it to go to both. I would do the Ark first, then the Creation Museum. The Ark was not a bad experience. They were both excellent experiences, but I liked the Creation Museum even more. So then we came back to the conference center, and I heard Ben Merkel do a talk. Ben Merkel is a Moscow guy. He is the president dean of uh, New Saint Andrews College, and. He's another great guy, big fan. And his talk was about seed and uh, basically like a, uh, a biblical theology and typology of seed in the Bible. And that was awesome. That, I mean, so many really cool takeaways about Genesis 1 and other uses of seed throughout scripture and how it ties back to Genesis 1. It was incredible. Uh, then we heard a talk from Joe Rigney, who is a recent convert to Presbyterianism. And he also moved to Moscow. It's like they're, you know, it's like they're infecting people and they, they, they grow and become more powerful and, and, you know, spread Christendom across the nation as, as we are to do. It's great. But Joe Rigney's talk was about the poetry of creation, the work of God's hands and ours. And it was about how um, the how God, it was a super cool talk. God creates things. He created the earth with unfulfilled potential. And it was good when he created it. And God planned for the earth to fall. And there are really cool reasons for that. Maybe I'll talk about it in another podcast episode. But really cool reasons for that uh, about how the way we see things in creation uh, and even in the Bible prior to the fall about God's planning for the fall. Mm. And then how, how God created the earth with this unfulfilled potential for man to work and fulfill that potential and make God's work even more glorious. So like God does this work and then he gives it to us to continue 
and make even better. And that's cool. That's awesome. Then we, there was a Q&A. The Q&A was great uh, with, with all the main speakers. That was cool. And then we got a talk from Doug Wilson. And it was about social contract theory as a, a, a feathered serpent. And that was an incredible talk. It was so cool to see Doug Wilson in person, who I've been following since 2020, I think. And he is just as commanding and powerful on stage as I thought he would be. And in person, I got to speak with him. And in person, he shocked me with his joviality. Joviality, is that a word? His, his joy, his ha uh, he, he just looked jovial, let's say that. <laughs> and uh, he was so kind and sweet. And I, like, I don't understand how anybody would have anything to say bad about the guy if they met him in person. But that's the problem. They don't meet him in person and they don't care to. So there you go. But man, it was, it was so sweet being able to talk even briefly with Doug Wilson. It was great. It was great. Uh, social contract theory is made up essentially. And, and it is even, even people who know about contract, social contract theory know that it's at best, a thought experiment. Social contract theory, there was never any event where everybody in the world got together and made this social contract. It is uh, literally created as a replacement for the actual, the real social contract that God made with man. And so it's, it's essentially a way to inject uh, relativism into the culture and say that we are God and not God and it creates an idol it it makes us uh, submit to a made-up rule which is an idol uh, which is a feathered serpent which Doug took from a uh, Mayan creation myth so that's social contract theory uh, very bad and we instead of following again man's word we need to follow God's word that was the conclusion of today's Fight Laugh Feast. It was wonderful. I'm having a blast. And I'm looking forward to tomorrow, which is our last day. And I will yet again, hopefully, do a recap video. So I will catch you tomorrow. God bless.